Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 92 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Hope you guys are doing well today, because I am hopefully not going to cause a giant explosion. One can never be too sure. Um, so, last couple episodes, as you may or may not know, I've been working towards what's needed for this whole process of a draconic reactor. And it's just occurring to me, I have my four chaotic cores, right? Yes, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, and I also have one more chaos shard, so we're cool there. And then I'm gonna need about 16 awakened draconium and four draconic energy cores. Missing some awakened draconium. So I was crafting some more of that. You can see it's, it's the infusion is kicking off right now. Um, so I should be able to bzz, that stuff, bzz, even more. Nice. Um, so let's see, you, you, I need these guys times four. They're expensive-ish. Auto crafting for the win. And draconic evolution. Let me tell you, there is a lot of crafting steps involved in making all these things. Um, and uh, and then we just need the uh, sixteen awakened draconium, and then we're we're in pretty good shape. And I believe, yep, there's four more there. That's cool. So this thing should be done. Zzz, going. Uh, so I can put you guys down. So I need four of these. Cores. So I did do off camera as promised. Zoinks. The two more chaos level infusions. So this should start charging. And um, this is 128 million RF. So the four of these will be about half a billion. Not bad. Sweet. Um, so we've got to get the four of those going, which won't be too big a deal. And these guys should all be good. Yeah, they're totally cool. And we can... Once it gets to the crafting phase, we're in good shape. All right? So there's the four reactor stabilizers that we need. So we're going to let that start crafting. And while that's going, we're going to look at the other reactor stuff that we need. So we need um, the reactor core, which is four awakened draconium and three draconium ingots in this shard. So that's like the easiest thing I've ever crafted in Draconic Evolution. Right? Um, so three draconium and four awakened draconium. Easy peasy. And then the last thing we need is a stabilizer. Right? Something like that. No, um, an infuser? Is that what it is? An infusion core? Something like that. What's it called? What's the actual thing called? Um, we need stabilizers. We need the core. We'll find it in here somewhere. It's this thing. Injector. Injector. Okay, cool. So I need four of these reactors. So that doesn't look too bad, actually. This is what I've been doing off camera for a bit, is prepping all the things. Um, so then we also need four draconium ingots, two iron. Cool. All right, so got a wyvern core, four stabilizers, four ingots, and two iron. So that should be good. So a little bit of crafting later, and we should be cool. Uh, so we just need to make that and this. So we'll come back when all this crafting is done. And for this one recipe alone, I had to make two more draconic tier fusion and crafters. This one recipe alone. <laughs> Everything else is like eight, maybe nine. Uh, but this one alone, I needed a 10. Oh, Brandon. Nice. Okay, cool. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, we've got pretty much everything we need here to get a reactor up and running. Now, I believe this stuff runs on Awakened Draconium. So I'm going to ask for like 32 blocks. So I have the resources for that. I'm a little short on gold for that. <laughs> of course I am. Uh, I did just go and farm gold, too. So, like, are you processing or are you done processing? You must be done processing. Um, 
Let's ask for 20 of these. Does that sound... Oh, still missing gold? Available 30... Really? That's all the gold I have? <laughs> I literally just recently went and harvested gold. Um, drill. In fact, it might still be in there because I was just there. Gold for days? Um, I recently just went and harvested like another, you know, pillow down. Let's 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 do it again. Back in a minute. All right, we now have enough gold to request 20 awakened blocks because I'm pretty sure awakened draconium is the fuel that we need for this reactor. The other thing I'm going to want is a dimensional transceiver. Um, so we already have one of these, right? Hooked up to the energy output of our system, right? Yes, and you are on Dire Power 1. You're sending Dire Power 1. Cool, because we actually need energy to start the reaction. So we need a, a, a burst of RF to get started on it. Um, in terms of sending the power back, though, we'll probably want a different dimensional transceiver because, well, obviously, like we're going to build this in another dimension. So the only way to get the power back here is the dimensional transceiver. Um, so get a couple Enderman heads. I'm going to go ahead and make these things off camera and we'll be right back. Remember to use capture mode on your soul vial to get your soul vials of Enderman. Totally the way to go. Might even, well, I'll put you back to spawn mode. I do have two Enderman spawners there. My weather skeletons are still running, by the way. What's that? Uh, ooh, nice. We're getting a good amount. Sweet. Put away some stuff I don't need. Soul binder. I have so much experience. That's crazy. This will help. Cool. So that should be my dimensional transceiver, right? Dimensional transceiver, I think. One, two. Nice. So those are going to be for sending the power back from our power generation dimension to our main base. So we're going to call this... Um, over here, we'll just kind of stick them right there. You're going to be a new channel called um, Dire Power In, right? And that'll go into the orb. So you'll receive power on Dire Power In, right? Um, I mean, I could probably change the channel to Dire Power Out, but whatever. So one of these will send power from the orb to the dimension to get the reactor up and running. Let's go visit that dimension. Did I set a binding here? Reactor Age, sweet. Now I am powering reactor age, right? Come on, let's go pick up. There you go. One of these is reactor age, right? Yes, reactor age two. Ah. You, I forget if I made this binding to reactor age two, so let's make sure. Is there a way to see which dimension it's in? RF tools dimension is all it says. Cool. All right, what I'm going to do is dial up Reactor Age 2, just making sure. You know what? It, it Yeah, it is, right? Because if I don't travel dimensions here, I didn't. Yeah, no. So this is the right place. It does, it does, it is correct. We're cool. So, I mean, what do you guys think about just throwing it in here? Like, let's, let's get to work. Um, so for our reactor to run... Uh, first, we have to put, and I don't have any idea what this looks like. I purposely went out of my way to not test this ahead of time because I wanted to see what it was going to look like. Now, I am reading a guide that kind of tells me how this thing works because otherwise I'd have no idea. Um, I don't think the Draconic tablet thing has been updated yet. So, from what I've read, you have to put four reactor stabilizers around this core. Uh, and they have to be at least two blocks away, but from what I'm understanding, you want to have them around five blocks away. So I guess one, two, three, four, five. Does that count as five blocks, right? One, two, three, four, five. And you want them to be kind of like this. I'm assuming that I'm doing this correct. Cool. All right. I should probably take my two by two thing out of there. Um, all right, cool. So that's that. Then we want 
a reactor energy infuser right below it. Zoink, like something like that. Uh, that's not what I want. I assumed you would be facing upwards. You, sir, are not facing the way I would expect you to. Not even a little bit. Maybe like this? Maybe you want to be above it? Is that what you want? What do you want? You are just a troll. What if I put you here? Is that what you want? All right, so you have no UAs yet. So let's try and figure this out. So let me try putting it like that. I think that will make it at least kind of behave itself. All right, now the next thing I have to figure out is how to get this thing to have a UI. So you are one, two, three, four, five blocks away. I think that's correct. You know what I think it is? I think these guys are rotated the wrong direction. Can I rotate you like? Yeah. I think that's the problem. I think the block placement is opposite what you would normally expect it to be. So if I want this guy to face the right direction here, I need to place him like that. Now the rings are facing the core. I think that's what we want. All right, so last one. All right, I really don't need this rotten flesh right now. Is that cool? Oh, hello. Whoa, that is some, there's some complexity going on there. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. Cool. All right, fuel in, chaos out, status offline. Uh, so this is containment field strength. This is core temperature. This is energy saturation, and this is fuel conversion level. A whole bunch of things I don't know a whole lot about. So we're going to figure this out together. All right, so first things first, right? There's a core temperature. That's going to heat up once we give it fuel, from what I understand. Uh, there is a containment field. The containment field is responsible for containing the nuclear reaction. If the containment field becomes overwhelmed, uh, things explode, and that is bad. Um, the stats about energy saturation and fuel conversion level, I mean, they're kind of self-explanatory, but I'm not 100% sure what the metrics mean, so we'll figure that out. We can place fuel inside there. All right, so there's a charge button when I put fuel in there. That's good to know. So awakened draconium blocks. Looks like you can have eight fuel in there at any given time, so that's cool. Nice, and the, the orb actually gets larger as you place individual pieces of fuel into it, so that's kind of cool. I want to see that, if I may. I want to try and angle it so that I can actually see. Nice, dude. Every piece of fuel I put in there gets a little bit larger. That's cool. From what I understand, also, you can't add fuel once the reactor is running or remove it, for that matter. So that's cool. Now, to get containment field strength, I believe we need to supply energy to the reactor stabilizer. So if I set you guy to receive dire power, so you should be getting juice now. Reactor stabilizer, cool. So you should have containment field strength once I activate it. Now, if I were a smart man, which I'm not, I would have built this all inside one chunk. Uh, but I didn't do that because I ain't so smart. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and chunk load you guys so that this is chunk loaded and this chunk is chunk loaded. Cool. So these two should be chunk loaded now cool really one block away wasn't really thinking that one through at the time and i don't feel like moving this right now um so from what i understand right here's how things work you ready we're going to put fuel in the reactor and then we're going to hit the charge button and that will slowly charge up this reactor core making it able to produce power um when it's generating power it's going to be producing heat from the core temperature, and we're gonna to need to feed it power to maintain the containment field. If the heat goes above 8,000 degrees, things quickly become a problem. So we're gonna to have to keep an eye on that. So 8,000 is right around the point where it's gonna be an issue. Um, 
So that's the gist. Once it's charged, we can activate it. And I'm trying to figure out if I can deactivate it once it's charged. So the gist is once this is running, it's going to produce power. And the power it produces will help to charge the containment field, which will help protect it from exploding. Um, it's not clear, based on what I'm reading, whether or not feeding energy into this thing will help it to maintain its containment field. So we're going to have to figure that out. So this is experimental test number one. Uh, if this goes awry, I have to go kill a Chaos Dragon so that I can get five more shards, because each of these requires a shard, right? And this requires a shard. So for each reactor I want to build, we have to kill a Chaos Dragon. So I'm going to try this. We're going to see what happens. And if things go awry, I might have to kill a Chaos Dragon, and I might have to do some testing in a test world before I try this again. But let's hit the charge button. Whoa. Cool things are happening. So that's the containment field, I think, keeping the thing safe. Let's read some metrics here. So, containment field strength is good. Core temperature, status warming up. Okay, nice. So this thing needs 100 million RF, I presume? No, oh, that is cool looking. That is super cool looking. Okay. Redstone mode. Configure the comparator output for this reactor component. Neat. Fail safe. When enabled, the reactor will automatically initiate shutdown when the temperature drops below 2500C and saturation reads 9. This can be used to automatically shut down the reactor in the event of a malfunction or just when it needs to be refueled. Cool. I guess we want a fail safe on. Fail safe sounds like a good idea, right? We want that? Neat. That's pretty cool. So this is RF being generated. This is the exact RF input required to maintain the current field strength. As field strength increases, this will increase exponentially. Okay. This is how fast the reactor is currently using fuel. As the reactor saturation increases, this will go down. So the more saturation we have, the better, right? Um, is what it sounds like, because the more saturation, the slower we'll use up fuel. So that's cool. It looks like it's kind of going up there. So it's still in warm-up mode. Containment field strength is at 50%. And it stopped climbing, and I'm not entirely sure why. Send receive buffer is low. Interesting. Max IO is 40,000 RF a tick. Aha! That's good to know. Dire power one, receive. Is that going to help? So each of these can only transfer 40,000 R of a tick. That's interesting to me. We might need more dimensional transceivers to keep this reactor stabilizer up and running. Containment field is still there. You're still, your energy saturation, okay, still in warming up mode, which is interesting. Not entirely sure what's going on, but I assume that things are okay. Nothing's blowing up yet, so that's a good sign. Um, I'd like to see this containment field strength go up higher than 50%, but we'll see. I'll come back in a minute when something has changed. So I guess we're just feeding power into this thing right now. I guess that's what's happening. See, it's a good thing I'm not doing this at my base. If I was doing it this at my base, it would be much faster because I could use the energy lasers. Um, I'm trying to think right now if there's a faster way to transfer energy besides dimensional transceivers um, across dimensions. I believe dimensional transceivers to be the only way to transfer energy across dimensions, right? Like we don't have tesseracts at the moment, right? Um, we have we have thermal expansion, but we don't have tesseracts because that's you know thermal dynamics. Um, I assume we have to build up that energy saturation up to a billion RF. I guess. Um, 
Usually I know all the answers to things because I've practiced them ahead of time, but I purposely went out of my way to not understand this a little bit because I kind of wanted to experience it with you guys. And uh, I don't know, there might be an explosion at some point. So I guess we have to continue charging up to a billion RF and, and then we'll see what happens. Maybe that's, maybe once energy saturation peaks, we'll be at done warming up. Uh, I guess we'll keep an eye on that. So I think what'll happen though is we're going to get to a point where we're generating energy. And the energy we generate can be fed into the containment field. So what we want to do is make sure that we don't extract all the energy being produced out of the reactor. We extract it out the, the back of any one of these stabilizers, by the way. So I think what we'll want to set up is some way to limit the amount of RF coming out of this draconic reactor. Um, so that we don't extract too much because if we extract too much the containment field will start to fail and that will be a bad time for everyone, right? So Let's go get something that will help with that while this is charging up and hopefully it doesn't explode while I'm gone uh, So we're gonna go Home for a minute and what we're going to want is again from draconic evolution a flux gate dun dun dun, -dun. So flux gate requires a comparator and one of those blue thingies, U. The flux gate apparently can be used to limit how much RF goes through. So redstone signal high, redstone signal low. So that's how much RF is allowed to go through this thing. So basically we're gonna take this with us, right? Um, like, do I have anything? So we've got a 25 million, we've got a 7 million vibrant, right? So what I would do, like, so you've got 25 million, right? So if I put you here, that's the wrong direction. If I put you here, we'd say on low mode, 1,000, right? And what that means is if you're outputting and you're inputting, we're getting 1,000 RF a tick. And on redstone high mode, we could make it like 10,000, right? So you're still getting a thousand, but if I gave you a lever, now you're getting 10,000. Okay, so that's what a flux gate does, is it limits to a very specific amount uh, how much energy is allowed to be transferred, right? And I can make this 500 and save, and now it's transferring 500 R of a tick. Cool? And you can see what the flow is down there. So that's what a flux gate does. Cool, guys? Let's go back to our reactor age. So what we're going to want to do is uh, inside our loaded chunks, probably over here, we'll put the flux gate so that it's facing out. And then we're going to, I'm going to set you to zero so that you're not transferring any RF. And I'll set you to zero as well for now. And then we'll have our dimensional transceiver there that's sending power out. So once this reactor is running, the reactor itself will power the containment field and will limit the amount of RF coming out of the reactor so that it doesn't use all the RF, it doesn't send all the RF back to our main base, right? We'll have a buffer allowed in there for, for maintaining the reactor. That's the gist of how I think this is supposed to work. Now, I don't know what level energy saturation has to be at before this thing's done warming up. I assume 100%, so that'll take a while. We have to get a billion RF stored in that thing. Um, and at 80,000 RF a tick, it's uh, going to take a while. I'm kind of curious, is that what we're actually sending? It says 20,000 RF a tick is output. Oh, you know why? Because you're limited to 40,000 RF a tick, right? Send receive buffer. Yeah, so we're still at 40,000. Yeah, we're only, so we're at negative 20 because we're, we're producing around, I guess, yeah. Reactor age. So this actually is not making a lick of difference, the second input, because we're limited on the sending side. So that's not actually helping at all. We'd have to have another transmitter at our base, sending double to receive double. Does that make sense? Anyway, we're a third of the way there. I'm gonna think about if there's a way to transfer energy more quickly, but for now, we'll be right back. I guess one option would be to like 
place of iron capacitor back there. That'll boost it up. That's speeding up our... Yeah, that's definitely speeding up the energy saturation. So that's what it is. We're limited by this thing and its ability to send RF into the reactor stabilizer. And then once these... Remember I had some vibrant capacitors just sitting in my system? So that'll at least help a little bit, but that's only about 75 million RF. Trying to think of like a sneaky way to get more power over here. Can't think of one. We'll think about it. We'll be back. So one more thing occurs to me. This may or may not be a good idea, but an energy extractor from RF Tools Dimensions. Apparently, the way this works is it draws energy directly out of the the age. So I'm actually kind of curious how fast that runs. So let's go to let's go home actually because I would like to have my vibrant capacitor bags here. This might be I don't know if there's a limit on this right and if there is cool. I'm not sure. But we've got our vibrant capacitors one, two, three right. Let's say that you know you're going to be an input. If we put our energy extractor right here. In theory, you should be a thousand RF a tick. That's it. Is that it? Oh, that is super slow. That is super slow. Is that the best you can do? Energy extractor? That's a bummer. Don't mind me just kind of thinking about ways to transfer energy to a dimension faster than I currently am. Obviously, I could have multiple dimensional transceivers. That you know, is an option, but yeah. Where are we at here? Probably about halfway. Energy saturation. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. All right, so energy saturation's at 50, containment field's at 50, and now core temperature's going up. Sweet. All right, so we're, uh, we're making progress. I don't know. Um, so at this point, are you using RF still? I guess you are. So the containment field is still good, so that's nice. Um, I don't know what temperature the core needs to be at in order for it to be considered ready to run. Um, I guess we're gonna have to see. So we'll wait for a thousand C, and then if that's not it, we'll come back. When it is it. Maybe it's halfway, maybe it's whatever this number is right here. Everything seems to be stopping at the halfway point, so I'm only guessing at that might be it. Cool. So we'll see what happens at 1000 C. Dun, 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 dun. The suspense is killing me. Yeah, no, it's not 1000 C. All right, so we will be back in a minute when it's at a number that makes sense. Now is probably as good a time as any to plop this dude down. And you are no longer going to be receiving on Dire Power 1. You're going to be sending on Dire Power in. Silly Slime Island. Cool. So your send-receive buffer is zero. Right. That makes sense. So we're losing a small amount of RF. And the reason for that is because we're not generating power yet. Cool. So you're still warming up. We'll be back when it's warm. Hey, we got something happening. So status still says warming up, which makes me a little nervous. But our core temperature stopped climbing. Are we using RF over here? We are not. The fact that this internal buffer is full means that we stopped sending RF into the reactor. And I think we'll demonstrate that by traveling home real fast and checking out what the orb up here is doing. This thing should not be... Yeah, he's receiving 15,000 RF, which is... Uh, we're producing 25, 27, and we're using some in here. Cool. I don't know why blazes are active at the moment, but whatevs. Are you all cool, by the way? Yeah, you're, you're repairing the beheader. That's, uh, that's why it's not killing anything at the moment. Go, beheader, go.
Nice. And now you should go back to killing things. Kind of curious why blazes are in here, but I don't know. Not my problem. That's not true. It is a little bit my problem. This is the blaze spawner right here. Yeah. Active without redstone signal. And it might just be something we were chunk loading and redstone signaling. But anyway, let's go back to our reactor. Dun, 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 dun. So this thing, I think, is ready to start generating energy, right? So if I activate it, he's online. Wow, energy generation rate is right around 300,000. Field input rate. Okay. So, hey, our containment field is dropping, and that's bad. You're not sending energy, right? Aren't you producing energy? If you're producing energy, aren't you feeding it into the field? Like, what is going on here? I'm not liking our field containment strength number at the moment. Containment strength seems to be getting low, but I think we're going to get to a point. Fuel conversion, energy saturation. I don't know what I'm doing. We're not sending energy anywhere, so all the energy should be... So this should stabilize at this point, because 40,000 is what we're allowed to transfer in here. 4096. Temperature's climbing. Energy saturation's climbing. Field input is stabilizing, see? It's right around 21%, so that's kind of cool. Fuel conversion rate is... This is how fast the reactor is currently using fuel. As the reactor saturation increases, this will go down. So saturation going up is good, right? But you know what? Maybe the reactor being on has to fill up the energy saturation before it can start transferring energy to somewhere or start using it for the field containment. Or more maybe core temperature has to start going up? I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's because I'm not extracting the energy? Maybe energy saturation is how much is in there at the moment. Is energy saturation how much is stored in the reactor? So we're generating 60,000. So what if I came over here and set this to 100,000 R of a tick? Is this gonna drop? You would think it would. Containment strength is going up, so that's kind of a good sign. But the field input rate is lower, so that makes sense as well. So you should be doing that. You should be getting power. Are you not getting power? I want to get a capacitor real quick, just to see. Let's get our vibrant capacitor banks. And go back to the reactor age. And instead of having this here, we're going to have a vibrant capacitor bank, which is set to input from the back. Perfect. Cool. So are you getting power? You're getting 75,000 RF tech. Beautiful. That's kind of cool. All right. So what's happening now? We are generating 51,000, apparently. We're extracting more than we're generating, which is probably kind of bad. So we're still losing power, but generation's going up. I have no idea. Containment's going up, which is good. I'm definitely a little lost on how this thing works, to be completely honest with you guys. Wow, that filled up really quickly. Um, we're going to need to come up with a better way to send power out of this dimension. Because if I can only send 40,000 RF a tick at a time, that's going to be bad times, right? So we want output U. So if I turn off the input mode, we should be losing about 40,000 RF a tick, right? So that's the best we can hope for. So we're going to need more dimensional transceivers to send power out of this dimension. Or we're going to have to figure something out in terms of transferring energy faster. Right? So containment field strength is still going up. Everything is kind of working. 
I think. I think the only problem we really have at this point is we can't transfer energy fast enough in and out of the dimension. That's probably the main issue we have right now. So I'm going to shut this guy down. What happens when I do that? Status stopping. Okay. So field containment strength is going up, which I guess is good. Generation rate is going down. Keep an eye on this for a few minutes. I don't know what, how long this will take, but I guess when we get to zero generation, that means we're stopped. So guys, uh, it's still in shutting down mode and the containment field strength is dropping. I'm a little bit nervous right now because I don't know what's about to happen, but it's dropping rapidly and it's got plenty of power, so I don't know why it's dropping. Is this gonna explode or is it cooling down? Are we okay? I don't see an explosion yet. Core temperature is around a thousand. So the clear indication is that I need to learn more about this process a little bit. Uh, I think I need to come up with a way to transfer more RF across dimensions. 40,000 is such a small number when we're dealing with things like draconic evolution numbers. So I've got two options. I can either relocate the draconic reactor to our overworld base far enough away such that if it were to explode, it would be okay. Um, like really far away from our main base. Um, that's probably what I'm gonna wind up doing. Hey, what's this thing? Creative flux capacitor. Okay, I didn't recognize that. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna wind up having to do. We're gonna have to set this up in the overworld because I don't think there's a way to transfer RF fast enough between the dimensions, short of having like 10 of these dimensional transceivers going, right? Um, 10 of them would be 400,000 RF a tick. And I think this thing might be able to generate, you know, close to that number, so. I think we're safe now. I think once this core temperature hits zero, we're gonna be in good shape. Um, and this thing will be done cooling down. So I think what we'll do is we'll come back next time, consider relocating this and trying this again in the overworld, far enough away from my base such that if it does blow up, it probably won't affect my base. And this is not a ruse to start a void base. I don't want you guys to think I'm gonna purposely blow up a reactor. Hey, look, you're done. Nice. Well, that's kind of cool. It used up, it looks like, <laughs> one nugget's worth of awakened draconium. Wow, it produced a lot of power for that. It really did. Um, so yeah, no, I'm not like faking this to try and blow up my base so I can move to a void base. That is not what's happening here. I am legit trying to learn how uh, this process works. So we'll come back next time. If I can't think of a good way to transfer power between dimensions, then we'll wind up rebuilding this in the overworld far enough away from my base that it won't cause an explosion that destroys my base, but we'll have to transfer energy via the draconic laser system. Cool beans. All right, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Draconic reactor, kind of cool. All right, guys, take it easy.